Pastor Sweeney, we're reflecting on the work on the British Isles in sure. this year, and we know that it really started through the work of laymen and laywomen. How can we even start to talk about the importance of lay work today? Um, I think we can start by saying that what we have in the British Union, and I believe across the world, is an understanding that it isn't about lay people versus Pastor, pastoral ministry. It's about us working in collaboration together. You know, as pastors, um, Ephesians 4.12, Paul tells us that our role as pastors is to equip and to train the laity for the works of ministry. And and when we see that working at its best, it, it makes for tremendous results. And one of the things we've seen in the British Isles is that when we, as pastors, equip, train and release our members, and sometimes it's not even the training and the equipping, it's the releasing and giving the freedom to our members and having the trust in our members to do what they do best as the Spirit leads and guides their life, we see tremendous results. So, for example, um, one of our executive committee members at the union level, uh, by the name of Fakazi Endebele, has, I think, planted now two churches um, in the community, in the local community. And this wasn't because somebody was beating him over the head, but it was about the spirit leading him in his, in his life and in other members that they saw the need and have made a tremendous impact by reaching the host community where, where they're serving. Absolutely, that's great news. And our pioneers were also adaptive. They changed their methods, they were creative. How can we see that happening today? Well, it's crucial that it happens today because I think one of the things that we, a mistake we can easily make is that we say, okay, well, we'll adopt the methods we may know from, let's say, we've come into the United Kingdom from another country. So this is the way we did it when we were back home, wherever home is, and we're going to do exactly the same thing here. But the pro the problem isn't necessarily the, the, the method that we're using. But does the method actually have a reflection to the people we're trying to meet? And what we're seeing is that when people are are, are flexible, and well, maybe not, maybe that's not the right word. When people are understanding who they're trying to reach, they then come with better approaches to reach the population and the, and the host community, whom we are very much keenly interested in winning for the Lord Jesus. You mentioned about the host community, and I know that there are some initiatives that have taken place around the British Union. Sure. Um, how can we emphasise the importance of not just having community in the title of our church, but actually doing the work of community? When we do community, it means we're actually involved, very much as Jesus would say, you know, being a salt, Matthew 5, being salt in our communities. Mm -hmm. So that means there is interaction, there is contact, there, there is a dynamic relationship between the two. Mm -hmm. And when that is done, we do see changes and we do see things happening. But the point is, it isn't trying... We aren't trying to just replicate other congregations. We're trying to say, understand by way of connection... Who's our community? What do they understand? What's the language they understand? And in that context, we are then better able to reach out to them. Our church has recently started to take part in Adventist community. And today we're partnering with Hope in the Dark. It has been an organization that has been taking care of homelessness within Dublin City. It's funny because We've lived, well, I've lived in Ireland for close to 20 years, or maybe, maybe more, I'm not quite sure, it's been a while. But coming from a poor economic country and coming into this country, I thought I'm coming to wealth. But having lived here, I've realized that there's so much within my back garden that I've never really thought about. Because I've even taken part in missionary work outside of the country. I've traveled to other continents, but I never really thought about here. So it has been amazing to see that God can use us within our homes, within our communities. And even the fact that we're just out here giving out sandwiches, people saw us and they're giving us money so that we can contribute more. It has been humbling because it shows that there's, there's a need or people are thirsting to lend out a hand or to help. But people just don't know how to help. So I would encourage you to, to do something, whatever you can, in whatever community you're in, do something and 
God will work in you and through you and he will bless and eliminate all that is going on within our world. Whether we see it or not, he sees the bigger picture. So be encouraged. And I think when we fail to understand our community, I think we fail the missional purpose that God has given. You know, God has a mission for the world. The church is there to help fulfill that mission. If we're just going into our communities and talking, that fails. It's when we actually take the time to listen and to interact and to be truly engaged with. I think that's where we see real differences being made. And we've seen some wonderful examples of, in the, of churches and individuals who have taken the initiative and have made an impact in their community doing creative things as well. Sure, sure. But, but, and, and, and even in the creative, I, th I don't think we should misunderstand this point, that we, we often quote Ellen White, Ministry of Healing, page 143, you know, Christ mingled. It's so simple, but yet it is so profound, and it's sometimes what we fail to do. And when you take the time to mingle and to be a part of another person's world or another person's community, you are then at a better place to draw them to Jesus Christ. So we have a pastor, Pastor John Melkey, who serves in the South England Conference. He's, his background is from um, Southern Asia. But he's now in the UK and has had tremendous results, along with the congregation, because it isn't just him, of winning people from the host community to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it wasn't just done by him talking at the folk, but it was very much done by him interacting and entering into their world, creating community, and then having created that community, they then want to hear more about the God whom he serves. Pastor John Melke, as, as an illustration, is just a wonderful example of somebody who has, has won people to his self been a part of their community, and now they're a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Excellent. Well, Pastor Sweeney, thank you very much for sharing these words. It's a pleasure.